Uh, happy National Pet Day. Today we're going to uh, draw and paint a simple cat portrait using a template um, that you'll be able to use to paint any cat you know or see. And uh, we'll be drawing my lovely kitten, Gogi, who just turned five years old last week. If we're lucky, he'll grace us with his presence at some point during class, or you may hear him demanding attention very loudly in the background at some point. Uh, he's very small, but he makes it up in uh, volume. So uh, getting started today, I want to remind everyone that this class is being recorded, which I will there. Okay. And um, uh, this video will be uploaded to Michael's YouTube channel tomorrow and be on the Michael's classes webpage soon after that. So the plan for today's class is to spend some time drawing a cat's face with the template and reference image that I provided on the class page. And um, then we'll take that drawing and I'll show you to how to show you how to simply paint it using gouache. I'll give a bunch of tips on how you can use all these techniques and methods to take what you've learned, um, tweak it a little bit, and go and create a drawing or an, and or a painting of your own lovely kitty at home. If you have any, uh, if at any point you're feeling overwhelmed or too far behind, don't panic. You'll be able to go back and watch the recording later. So if you want to see any details, you'll be able to watch it, uh, pause it, watch it again and again there. And however, if you have any burning questions, I have Stacy here in chat and in our ears to help get my attention and to help answer those questions. So don't hesitate to type any questions in chat. Um, let's see, all the supplies that I'm using are listed with the product numbers on the class page and uh, the links can be shared in the chat throughout class as well. If you don't have the exact products, I'm using, it's totally fine. Just use what you have on hand and make do with what you have. So uh, going over the supplies first, I'm gonna move this out of the way. Like I said, we're gonna be doing a drawing for the first half and then painting for the second. So really, if you want to just do the drawing portion, all you'll really need is a pencil. I like to use a mechanical pencil just out of preference though any soft lead pencil will work. Um, using an HB or softer is probably best for the watercolor paper that we're drawing on. And then you also need an eraser. Any type of eraser works well. Um, I don't really like using like a number two pencil eraser because this sometimes can damage uh, the paper, but I'm just using some extendable retractable erasers right here. And then um, if you're really particular about your measurements and your lines, you can use any straight edge or ruler, um, but that's not required. I won't be using it during class. It's just an optional thing you can have. And um, also I suggested having something that you can trace a three to four inch circle with or um, anything that you can draw, like even a protractor works. So um, we're just using this as the main base of our cat's head. So it could be any size. You just don't want it to be too big compared to your paper or too small. You know, use something that's uh, good in relative size to whatever paper you're using. So if you're just wanting to draw the cat, you can stop there. You don't have to use all these other materials that I've got for painting it. Um, but if you do want to join me in painting today, I'll be using gouache on watercolor strength paper. Um, gouache is, if you're not familiar with it, gouache is pretty much like, imagine, watercolor and acrylic had a, a baby. That's what gouache is to me. I like it because um, you can thin it out and use it more of like a watercolor or you can um, make it really thick and paint and cover up things like you would with acrylic paint. Hey Maddie, we got a question. Yes. Can you, can you use anything as a circle? Oh yeah, anything as a circle. I'm using a, um, this is a strawberry jelly jar lid. You can use your upside down mug. You can use, I've used like a spool of tape before and trace the inside of that. Um, so anything you that will work it does not have to be uh, like something real precise or a stencil or something. Let's see, let's take a look at chat for a second. Hello from Johnson City, from Cincinnati, Seattle. Wow, we've got people from all over. Well, hello everyone, welcome. Okay, yeah, you can use the water jar, absolutely, if you've got it and it's a circle. Um, or if you really want to just freehand your circle, that's fine too. There's not a grade for this project, so just use whatever you have and make it work, it's totally fine. Okay, so uh, going back to the supply list, brushes. We can use any size brushes. Um, this is the 
what is this? I'm using doo -doo -doo -doo, uh, the round watercolor brush set by Artist Loft Necessities. Um, oh, and I skipped over the paper that we're using. Um, this is the Artist Loft watercolor pad, um, six by nine. And I, I'm just using this, I like this size because it's kind of smaller and cute. Um, but this uh, jar I have, this jar lid I have um, kind of fits well here in the center. And I've got room because we're drawing a cat. I've got room to put ears below and maybe a chest or ears above and maybe a chest below. So um, there's plenty of space there for that. If I was using something much bigger like this cup, maybe a little bit too big for that size paper. paper. So just use your best judgment. Um, and that's the paper, what else? Oh, and then of course the gouache. Here's the gouache, pronounced gouache, not gouache or gauche or whatever. I believe it is gouache. Um, and it comes, here's the Artist Loft uh, Essentials gouache paint 12 piece sit kit. We will be using white, black, yellow, ochre, pale green and crimson red. But like I said, if you have watercolors or acrylics or oils even, if you really feel up to it and you want to use that today in class, you are more than welcome to. Gouache is my medium of choice, but there are no rules here. Do what you want to make your own little painting of your cat. Um, and I'll go more into that whenever we get there in the painting part. The brushes, I skipped over. Um, this is the round watercolor brush set by Artist Loft Necessities. And any size works. Um, the size really does not matter <laughs> for this particular project. Uh, I'll be using kind of a bigger one and then a smaller one. That's really, hey Maddie, really it. Can yes. you can you explain what gouache is really quick? Yeah, it's a water-based paint, um, and it's just thicker than watercolor um, and thinner than acrylic. And whenever you paint with it, if you're familiar with acrylic paint, acrylic paint can leave a kind of waxy, shiny feel. And gouache is very, okay, it doesn't really show up well on camera. It's very matte, very flat, almost chalky looking. And um, I like using it because if I want the watercolor look, I can just thin out the gouache and get it to be a little bit more transparent. Whereas, um, with a, a, a or with watercolor paint, you don't really want to use that much of the watercolor paint itself to make it opaque. You just use it for transparency. So if you're wanting to be uh, opaque, you would use acrylic or oil. Um, but gouache is will do both, and it's very pretty and it creates these really nice flat colors. So um, that is my preference, and I highly recommend gouache if you are dabbling in uh, painting and you don't know what medium to try out. I love gouache. This kit with just the 12 colors is um, the base level. It's a really good starter set. And um, you can of course mix them and create many more colors like you can with any other paint. Okay, let's see, am I missing any other questions? Almost through the supply list. I think we're doing it. Okay, yeah, people are seeing the difference between acrylic and gouache. Yeah, I'll go a lot more into detail about it whenever we get there um, in the painting portion. Um, okay, and the last thing is a palette. I use this palette paper pad because I use lots of different mediums in my own personal art life. I like to have something that I can just use for everything. And this is like disposable, you rip it off and then throw it away. And I can use oil on a sheet. And then my next project is acrylic and then I can use acrylic on that sheet and throw it away. I don't have to keep cleaning pads. Um, it is a little bit more wasteful, but as long as you make good use out of each sheet, then I think it's fair game. Um, and then of course, since we're using a water-based paint, we're going to need water to wash our brushes with in a paper towel. Um, but like I said, if you don't have all the paints or the water or the brushes or something, you're more than welcome to just draw along and then stop there, maybe watch and then come back later and watch the recording if you want to try the painting on your own time. Um, okay, and then also I mentioned having scissors. Scissors are always good to have on hand if you ever have any brushes with loose hairs and you have like that one hair that's longer than everything else and it's dragging across the paper and making it really hard on you, then scissors are always good to have. Okay, so do, do, do what's on my list here? So 
Like I mentioned, we'll be drawing for the first portion. And um, if you just want to draw and then tackle painting another time, that's fine. And um, we're going to start out oh, here with the template that I made. So I do have it here right below on screen. Um, so you'll be able to see it if I ever move it off of camera. And also it's available for PDF download on the Michael's class page. And um, you'll just be able to see it here whenever I'm working. So uh, when I made this template, I was looking at the proportions of the cat's face and to see how the features such as the eyes, the nose and the ears all compared to each other in size and placement. Um, when drawing the faces of any creature, um, including humans, it's all about the scale and the position of the features on the face relative to the other features. So I made this and I broke it out step by step using the template um, you can see here below and on the screen. And um, this template I just sketched up and made quickly in Photoshop for you guys to have. Um, it's not some official template or some like proper curriculum from a school. It's just something that I observed and I made uh, for this project specifically. Um, so you have to imagine that this template is the skeleton of our cat's face. It's not going to really look like this at all in the end, but it helps guide us to where we need to be um, and how and where a good starting point for where we can go from there and change it and make it look unique to our cats. Um, because as we know, all cats are very unique and different from one another. So um, I'm going to start by drawing straight onto my watercolor paper. These little pads are nice because they'll just rip right out. Um, and I'm using just my mechanical pencil and um, some retractable erasers, but you can use any type of pencil here. Um, let me move a couple things out of the way so I have more room. Okay. And um, watercolor paper is pretty soft. So you wanna be careful if you're heavy handed because your pencil lines can and will actually carve into the paper. Um, and you'll notice if you were to lightly paint with watercolor or shade over a section with pencils or colored pencils, you'll have a white dent in the paper there from carving the pencil lead. Uh, fortunately with gouache, um, one of the forgiving things about it is that if you uh, are using gouache, it is thick enough to fill in those lines and those those dents won't show up as much. And um, it's also opaque enough to cover up your pencil lines. Uh, so you won't have to worry about erasing all your hard lines. If you're using watercolor though, you definitely wanna be more wary of that and uh, draw lightly and erase your lines as much as you can so they're not as visible underneath the paint. Um, and let's see. Also for this paper, it's good to note that there is a front and a back to this paper. It's really, it doesn't make much of a difference in the end result. It'll look just about the same, but I notice if I have multiple pieces side by side and one of them I've drawn on the front and one of them I've drawn on the back, it'll be like smoother looking. The paper is a little bit textured because it's soft watercolor paper. It'll be smoother on the back and then more textured on the front. So uh, I just, with a word of caution, make sure you always are drawing on the same side consistently if you are doing a series, especially because it would bother me if I hung them up all, all on the wall. And I noticed that when the light hit them, that one of them was like really smooth and the rest of them were kind of textured. Um, but if that's not something that would bother you, then don't worry about it. And you can use both sides at will. So let's get started with the template. Um, here I have this on screen. It's pretty easy to follow. I've broken it out step by step, color by color. And as we go through, I'm going to give you some tips on how you can change it and adjust it to fit whatever style cat you have. Um, what style cat, whatever breed or shape cat you have. I know I've got uh, quite a variety of shapely cats on my home. Okay, so I have my paper here. Step one, draw a circle. This I think most of us can manage. Um, things to watch out for here, don't put it too high, don't put it too low, kind of put it center because we're gonna be putting our ears above and um, our chest below. So you don't want it to be way up to, to the top and then you don't have any room for your ears. So I'm gonna put it in the center and I'm just going to eyeball it. You could measure it if you really want to, if you're really particular. I'm not, I don't really care. And I kind of like the hand drawn 
look. So I'm just going to loosely trace a circle like that. Easy peasy. Next step, I'm going to cut it like a pizza and I'm going to divide it vertically and horizontally. So again, you could measure it. I just like to find the, uh, the general center, draw a light line. Let's make sure it's showing up on camera. Can everyone see these pencil lines well enough? Okay. And um, then we're going to divide it horizontally. Now, if I thought maybe that was like way too wonky, just erase it and draw it again, not a problem. And then the next step is um, these lines here, which are a little weird uh, upon first look, but these lines are actually used to help guide the angle of our ears. The length of this blue line is the same length as this green line on the next step. That's how I make the proportion for the ears. Um, and that can change depending on whatever breed of cat you have or the emotion of the cat. Uh, for this template, I made it really simple and we're just doing a 45 degree angle, 45 degree angle, 45 degree angle. But if you look at the screen or look right here below my camera, whoa, where is my camera right here? I'm going to show you guys cat, let's see, cat template here. This is Gogi. This is the reference picture we'll be using later. And what I've done here is pretty much put a clock face over his ears. And um, you can look at the tip of his ears, right at the very tippy point, if you were to draw a line down to the center of the crosshairs in the circle, what, imagine you're on a clock, what time, what time is that telling? It's like at the five, six, seven minute mark. So then you would draw that line at that angle to really get the exact angle of his ear. And if I were to have, uh, let's see if we hide Gogi, another cat, the angle of the ear is here, maybe at the seven, eight, nine, nine minute mark. Then of course the, I don't know what it, 40, 53, 52 minute mark. So changing um, the angle of that really helps change the angle of the ears and change the expression or the individuality of whatever cat you're using. Okay, so going back to there, Gogi again. Cat template again. Okay, so on to the next step. Like I said, we're just doubling that blue line and then putting it up here. So you can use a ruler or you can use your fingers. I just like to use my fingers like you see here, or you could even use your pencil and put like your thumbnail here and go, okay, it's about there, there, and boom. Ta -da. Now, if you have like a Scottish fold cat or something, you can still use the angle trick, but your cat's ear is not going to be this long. So like I said, this is just a, a loose guide and you can change the length, the angles, um, the sizes of things to make it suit your cat. I really recommend studying a picture of your cat and putting the clock face on it and then deciding where those angles line up. So just over here. Doo -doo 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 like this it's not too bad and then for the eyes right here now this one the green eyes um this halfway mark is the eye line and even on a human head your eyes are actually halfway through between the the top and the bottom that's where your eyes are and it's the same excuse me same for a cat and we're just going to draw a little half circle here a little rainbow arch um and you can make that arch bigger or smaller according to your cat's face um you don't want it to be the whole way. I kind of like to leave almost a full length of the arch to the left and to the right. Um, but I may end up going back and changing it a little later, depending on what it looks like in the end. Where did yeah, I get the clock? A, yeah, we got a question. Um, yes. Where did you get the clock template to put on the cat's face? Um, I Googled clock analog face transparent PNG, and then I found it in a in Photoshop I overlaid it onto my cat's face um, and I, I think we can share those out after the class too with everyone yes in case anybody wants it sure yep um okay so back to the other eye just making it symmetrical 
Da -da -da -da. And then for the nose, the top of the nose, um, if you think of like a cartoon cat, most people think of like this, this little like eyes, triangle nose and the little three lippy mouth thing. You know, if you draw a cat emoji, that's got, it's always using the three for the little lips and it's not that far off from reality. The nose is a triangle, um, in a simplified triangle. I like to find the halfway point between uh, this section, just eyeball it or measure it if you really want and then draw a straight line across. You do not want these lines to go all the way to that nose, or sorry, you don't want the nose lines to go all the way to the eyes. You want it to be just kind of shy of that and then pick a point a little further down and then draw the triangle. But you can see it's a little wonky. I'm gonna use my eraser and shorten this one on the right a little. Um, and I'm leaving this top line, I'm leaving it long to overhang and um, go beyond this triangle because later in a later step, we're going to turn that into nostrils, as you can see down here. Okay. All right. And then the mouth uh, is also that three shape, but to get the angle quite right, we're just going to invert that triangle and do it upside down right here and connect to that outer circle. How are we doing? Everyone okay? Okay, okay, okay. Next step, the ears. So we're just going to take the tip of the, the ear line and connect it down. I like to use the halfway points. So if um, I was using a clock face again, this would be like the seven minute mark or the, I don't know, wait, no, five, whatever. I'm embarrassing myself. This is three or four minute mark. And then further down here, halfway in between is just what this template is, but you can use that clock face template to uh, check to see where those ears connect to the head at what times on the clock those connect to the head. There we go. Please don't make fun of me for my clock reading skills. Okay. Next one, we're just gonna do the same thing on the other side. Okay, ta-da. Now the next part is the eyes. Down here, um, we're going to end up doing like a straight down and then an up angle. Oh, that's way too light for you guys to see. Straight down and then up angle like this. We're gonna drop it down. And then I like to make this uh, line like a third of the way down here. So I can go one, two, three before I hit this nose line. But again, you can change that line and that proportion according to whatever your cat's face is, just for practice. That's how it fits here on this face. And then we're curving it up and we're connecting it. So it almost looks like a teardrop at an angle. The only hard point is this inner eye right here. And then everything else is round. You don't want a hard angle right here. Okay. And now we're just doing the same thing on the other side, make it line up and connect. Ta -da. Then uh, the last part I have on this step is these little orange lines. And those are marking the outer corners of the little three shape whenever we draw a cat's mouth. And I like to line those up here with the outer corners of the eye. And then that's just a starting point for the next step where we are filling out the cat's jaw. So this main circle is really like the main skull of a cat. Um, and then the jaw is a separate piece that isn't on yet. So we still have to add the chin and this outer jaw and um, and then of course the nose as well but for these cheeks they are kind of a good guideline for making the, the general lip look right here and then um, you can use those as a reference of how wide to make your jaws um, but I'm getting a little ahead of myself these corner cheek part are um, kind of like the fluff of a cat outside the cheekbones. 
And I like to draw them for Gogi in particular, right below this eye line out here. And then I connect this connection of the ear to the skull to this line. Same thing on the other side. And then I just take that and I follow down this cheek, this lip line that I've created down here. And the same thing on the other side. And then we can connect the chin. Okay. Then the last step, everyone doing okay? Any questions on that so far? We're very close to being done with the template. I'm looking at chat. Okay, we're doing okay. Last part, nostrils. So um, this triangle is not the exact shape of the nostrils. We're actually going to round some things out and just use that as a guide. So the nostril is a kind of a circular, make a little U-turn right there on the outside and go back in. And then we're going to connect it down to the very tip of this triangle. So we're going in and making a right turn down here, back up and making another loop like this. It kind of looks like a bubble letter T. If you ever draw with bubble letters, that's essentially it. And we're just using the triangle underneath it as a reference point for the ends and the bottom part. And this I'm noticing looking at it, it's kind of wide. Maybe I made these nostrils a little bit too long. Um, some cats have very small, tiny noses and some have bigger noses. So that's something that you can play with the proportion of to get the end result that you want. So we have now officially drawn the whole template. You're done with this template. Goodbye template, we don't need you anymore. So how do we get from, let's see if I can move my water cup out of the way. How do we get from this template to this final drawing of Gogi? Um, a lot of these are just guidelines, um, but this isn't really the exact same looking. It's much rounder, softer. Um, this chin even looks different. So what we're going to do is we're going to hide this template. And now we're gonna look at Gogi's face, hide the clock, Gogi's adorable face. And um, I think, he, oh, there he is. He's over on the heating pad. I'll, I'll show him off later. Um, we're going to look at the face of the photo reference below and we're going to apply those detailed angles, rounded edges to our template. So let me do a little bit of erasing and get rid of this extra stuff. Sorry for the shake. And I'm going to move this over here so it's a little easier for me to write on. And we're just going to erase some of these lines that we know for sure we don't need anymore. So this crosshair the diagonal line. The skull line. Crosshair, diagonal. This where the ears connect to the skull erasing. Da -da -da -da. All right. And you can some people if they're if you're using a really soft pencil and you're getting um, pencil smears, use a, a dry paintbrush or, um, or you can just blow it or shake your paper off a little bit and that'll uh, get rid of all these little eraser crumbs. No biggie though. Okay, I have now erased what I want. Pencil over here. Um, so cat's ears are not perfect triangles. Unlike the Halloween decorations that we sometimes see that put bones in the animal ears, which there are no bones in ears, just cartilage and um, tissue, they're not perfect triangle bones underneath. They are actually very round and soft. So we're going to round out the edges here and just try to make it fit the reference image as best as you can. Um, but the good rule of thumb is you don't wanna erase into the skull you want to add on top of. So just like bones, everything is on top of the bones, the flesh, the hair, everything goes on the outside. So we're not going to erase into, we're going to add to. Um, so here the ear, I'm noticing that Gogi's ear kind of rounds right here. It's not a perfect angle, it rounds and then goes up and rounds in this is also a round line and there's even a little bump right here 
before connecting down. Then I'm going to do that on the same, on the same thing on the other side. Should have done the left side first. So my hand is in the way. And connecting. Perfect. And then we can go back in and erase that line underneath. Because I am freeing, um, freeing, freely drawing it, not measuring things, everything will look a little bit different um, piece to piece. This one looks a little bit uh, skinnier eared than this one, um, but I'm just following the template for this class. And then uh, let's see what else. Gogi's nose is kind of smaller and more rounded. So I'm going to kind of add a little top right here and shorten these nostrils a little bit. Any race. Erase. Shorter, rounder, perfect. Uh, Gogi's got this cute little white chin right here, which is actually showing up really well. But then on the reference photo, I'm seeing that um, kind of his jaw behind his chin goes down into the sides. So I'm actually going to bring this line down and kind of hit the bottom edge of it. Like that. Just erase some of those extra guidelines. Here. Am I going too quickly? Everyone doing okay? We're on pace. Maybe I made this little two round compared to this one. Let's flatten them out just a little bit. Just a little round. Not too perfect. Just, just having a good time with it. Little mouth. And then his face is not perfectly angular, although he does have quite a pointy cheek. I'm going to round it off just a little bit. Round it a little bit more down here. And Gogi's got these big dinner plate eyes, as I call them. And as a rule of any illustration, um, the bigger the eyes, the cuter. So I could make these a little bigger. His eyes. They seem all right, but I am going to draw in his pupil here. Which is long and um, kind of, it's fat because we're in low light here in this photo, but um, it's not real slit skinny as you would think of, um, kind of like a cartoon cat would have. That would be only if we, we were in really bright light. And that look actually looks kind of scary. So um, we're not going to do that. We're going to make them nice and round, big dinner plate eyes, so it's cuter. Let's hey, Maddie. See. Yes. Can you go over the pencil and eraser that you're using? And then we had, we had a, a request to please go a little bit slower. OK. Uh, I'm going to slow down a little bit in this next part anyway, so you have plenty of time to catch up. Um, this is the Settler Mars Plastic Extendable um, eraser. I like it because it's like I just finished up my older one uh, yesterday and I had to go out and buy this. And um, it's very satisfying. It's like finish it, finishing using a um, tube of chapstick that you've had forever and then finally getting to the end of it. It's a very satisfying feeling. Um, and I just like this, and I have a smaller, skinnier one here for more precise erasing. And they even make even thinner, skinnier ones. If you're if you're like a graphite artist, um, you can find like eraser pencils that are that thin, um, that so you can erase little highlights and details real tiny. But these two sizes are good for me. Uh, this one is the Factus BM2. And uh, these are all available at Michael's. All these supplies are available at Michael's. Okay, so the next part is pretty much preparing for painting. So if you've ever done a paint by number um, painting ever, uh, then you'll know that they kind of draw out the different sections of where the different paints are. So if you have a very, very prettily textured cat, maybe like a tortoiseshell or something, you're gonna add 
at a lot of these sections. For the purposes of this demonstration, it's very simple. Gogi is a nice black tuxedo cat. So we're just gonna do the black, the white, and then the pink of his ears and the green of his eyes. But I will show you here, this is another one of my cat's biscuit. He is a very, very fluffy, very, very textured, um, very colorful. And it's the same theory. We're doing kind of paint by number coloring in certain areas, following his face, just looking at it and drawing out where the different colors are. And then I go and paint it according to how I've blocked out the colors on the previous one. And I use the exact same method to get to his face. So I've got the template underneath, the triangle ears and everything. I drew out his fluff and we still got beautiful cat in the end. And um, I'll take this moment to also show you a couple other examples. Hey Maddie, we also yes. got a request to please go over the cat's mouth again. Yes, absolutely. So here is Biscuit again. Um, same idea, same rules and everything. His nose is a little different shaped. He's got the big fluff and the, the big round ears. Um, here is Ryder, he's another one of my cats. He's kind of a chonker. And so I even gave him these rolls because he's kind of a chubby baby. And then uh, I even drew my friend's Corgi. This is a little, it strays a little bit away from the template with the size of the nose and the mouth, but it's still the same rules as far as the angling the ears, the placement of the eyes. Um, so you can really use that template and build on top of it to get a bunch of different looks. Okay, so going back to the mouth, I'm going to, let's see, at what point do we want to start for the mouth? On the template. So we have the inverted, or we have the triangle here for the nose, we invert it. We make note of the corner of the eye and where it's going to line up with the lip. The lip is formed down here and we use that kind of bubble of the lip to guide our jaw line. And then the chin will intersect those two lips. But for Gogi in particular, we had his, um, his chin go down, or his cheeks, his jaw, his cheeks into his jaw go down below the chin to give um, the illusion of a jaw behind it. Because you can see on the reference picture below, his little chin is separate from the black below. Okay, so the template, I will put it on the screen. It's in chat. Um, and it's also available for download PDF. Now I'm going to go over how to uh, draw out the different colored sections of his face to make the paint by number guide. So the ears are pretty easy because there's no real wrong way to do it. Um, looking at the reference photo below me, the outer edge is kind of uh, the thin black edge here. And then the cat fur on the inside, no one's gonna know if you make it up and do it however you want. So just try a few different times, make it cute however you see fit. You can do the really classic, just triangle. But I like to add, I like to add the fluff. So just doing some zigzaggies doesn't have to be perfect. I can go back and change a little bit. Maybe it's a little too high. I want his ears to appear a little bit lower set. So maybe I'll making it up however I want. There are no rules. Okay, and then just doing the same thing. This outer, outer side of the ear is thin. And then this top side is a little bit thicker and then you just add the fluff. And then of course, this is a guideline, um, but I can paint however I want on top of it. So if I decide when I get to the painting part that it looks a little off, then I'm just going to paint over it however I see fit. It does not have to stick to this um, guide. And Gogi is a black cat, obviously but he does have some highlighted points here on his forehead and on his nose. 
So those are areas that I decided to um, single out. You can see here, just to create a little bit more visual interest. Um, but that's totally, you know, just using whatever you want to do, your best judgment to get the final look that you like. I think it would be pretty cute actually if I just left this black and he was just black and white. Um, but just to create a little bit more visual interest, I was blocking out some of these highlighted areas, which I painted gray in the end. Um, so I'm just going to do that again here on the forehead, kind of goes in like this. And maybe I'm just looking at the highlighted bits on the photograph here. I'm going to paint this area gray. And if you really want to, you can make a little note, gray. I'm going to be painting that gray. And then here above his nose, his nose is black as well. That's why I really wanted to add a highlight here because it could just potentially blend into the rest of the background. This. And then his lip, he's got a little milk lip as my mom calls it. And we're just going to make it kind of bubble out here. And then down here. And then these little like extra white dots, you can either use the tip of your um, brush to have like really precise little dots or you can use like a white gel pen or something else to achieve that same look but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it so that's his white lip and then i just wanted to add the gray on this side as well to um, separate from the, the nose from the rest of the face so kind of winging it and um, the paint when we get to the painting part it'll really take shape there okay so we have his highlight here, highlight here, nose details, lip details, um, his eyes. You can draw in where you want the highlights to be if you want. Adding the white highlights are what really make a, um, an eyeball come to life. Excuse me. Yes, I see a question. Is it okay if I just do a pencil drawing? Absolutely. You don't have to continue and do the painting part. Um, it's, it's fairly simple because um, I'm just going to be using the black and white and the two other colors, three other colors. Um, but yeah, if you just want to tackle the drawing part and then stop there, that's totally fine. Do not feel pressure to paint. Or if you want to just watch the paint and learn about it um, and then try it again later on your own time, also totally fine. Okay, so we have the face, we've got the color by numbers going on, the paint by numbers thing going on. For the chest, the chest is um, really just subjective. Uh, my reference photo has Gogi's shoulders kind of going at an angle, but uh, you can just place them anywhere. I wanted it to be more of a symmetrical straight on bust look. Um, I see Wendy's asking, where are the highlights again? Um, I'm just, you just want to put, I like the rule of two in each eye. If you do more than that, you're going to get really anime, uh, like manga looking eyes, which is fine if that's what you want. The more highlights, the cuter in general. Um, but I just like a small one on the left and a larger one on the right, kind of overlapping the main um, pupil in the cornea, no, iris, the, the pupil in the iris. So, um, there's no real wrong way to do it. I just like to make it semi-symmetrical. So left, small, right, larger, left, small, right, larger. But then again, we will be um, painting all of that and then adding the white at the very end because it's thick enough to go over the colors. So who knows where they'll end up in the end. Uh, okay, back to the chest. I, you'll note here that I left a little white line here just to separate his head from his uh, body. That's because he's black. Um, hey, Matt, yeah. real quick. Yes. We also have a question about whiskers. What, what did you do about the whiskers? So I don't actually have any whiskers on Gogi here. I think I did one. Where is it? Let me see. Hmm. I don't think I have it on hand, but I did draw one at one point that had whiskers. But what I recommend for that 
uh, I, I can go into detail um, during the painting part, but don't use a um, paintbrush to the, do the whiskers. Use a white gel pen or a white um, permanent marker if you, any variety will work. And then um, I also highly recommend waiting for the paint to dry 24 hours before doing any, doing any fine lining um, with microns or Faber-Castell pens or whatever have you. Because um, if it's still a little wet, then it can um, kind of ruin the tip of the pen. But okay, so last step, we're just going to do the chest. I'm kind of just picking a spot. This looks like a good halfway point between the cheek and the chin and rounding it down like this. And we can come back to that, change the shape, change the length later, just as a general placing point. Okay, let's get on to painting. So I'm gonna move some of the things out of the way. Painting, painting, painting. We have our eraser in case we want to erase some details. Got my water. And I will keep this up here. My palette paper. I'm going to open up a new page. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Everything still fitting on the screen. Colors I am using are black. I'm using yellow ochre, my favorite yellow paint color, no matter what medium I'm using. Uh, pale green, white, and then crimson red. So if you're using, if you're painting a fancier looking cat, those colors may be completely different. Gogi is nice, easy black and white with green eyes and pink ears. So I can get everything I need out of it from here. Um, let's start by putting some paint down. So when you're painting, uh, it's a general rule for any medium you're using to paint from light to dark. Um, you can see actually here, pointing out my own mistakes. I painted his whole chest black and forgot that I needed to add his white little uh, scarf here on his chest. So I had to paint very, very thickly over. And if I'm honest, it doesn't look the best. I would probably even go over this one more time with white paint to really get it to look flat. So while uh, um, gouache is thicker and will cover up some mistakes, if it's real big area like that, it is a little noticeable. It doesn't bother me too much, but it is noticeable. And then as well as um, like up here in the ears, the pink, you wanna paint first, so then you can put the black over it and not have to worry about the wetness of the paint picking up the colors underneath. While it is doable, it's just not ideal. So we're going to start off with white. And um, yeah, you can't have white watercolor, so having white gouache is wonderful. Um, don't put all of your paint out at once. Gouache does dry really quickly and you'll get like a skin over, it'll ha harden like a shell. So if you've used acrylics, the same thing happens. And um, you just wanna put out what you're working with currently so it doesn't dry up. And we are going to paint our white first. So we've got white chin, white lip, white chest. Should I draw in a little bit of a chest part? Sure. Matt, you've got a couple questions. Mm -hmm. So can you use gosh or, or gouache <laughs> on canvas and can uh, you use a hair dryer with it? Um, it won't work on a normal primed canvas. If you prime it with like a watercolor gesso and the canvas says made for watercolors, then yes, there are some canvases that do that. Um, but otherwise, it's just going to bleed out because it's water-based. It's going to bleed out into the canvas and it's going to look bad. So you really want to use something that says watercolor quality paper. And can you use a hairdryer? Absolutely. It dries really quickly. We probably won't need to use a hairdryer. Okay, so the white areas are pretty small. So I'm just going to pull out a random size. This is a four. 
And um, I'm going to erase a little bit down here where I know I'm going to be painting just to give myself a little bit of more room. Less room for error even. Okay. And we're just going to get our brush. Where can I fit this on the screen? We're going to get our brush a little bit wet so that it will uh, pick up the paint. You don't want to um, work with a really dry brush or else you might as well just be using acrylic. So um, you want your brush to be a little wet and then you're adding a little bit of water. And then this palette paper is like a waxy material so nothing is absorbed into the palette. And um, I'm just getting it to be kind of like a, a melted butter consistency or like a cream consistency. Um, if you want the watercolor look, it won't show up with white really, but you could definitely um, add more water and get a more watercolory look and um, add less water, make it really thick and it works as acrylic. So we're just going to start here nice and easy with the chest. And um, yeah, I know that we are painting white on white right now. That is not all that exciting, but it does look different than the paper. You can tell here, this is a different paper, but it will look different here as well. This white looks different than this white. Not all whites are the same. So you need to paint that white area in. This is chin. I feel like watching someone paint white paint on white paper is probably not the most riveting content, but bear with us guys. There isn't much white to do. Okay. It doesn't look that much different now. It looks different to me in person on camera. You're probably wondering like, why the heck is she even bothering doing that? Uh, trust me, it makes a difference in person and you'll be able to really tell in the end result. So um, because I'm using a pretty small brush, I'm able to squish down, pull and get the large area covered, or I can just real lightly touch with just the tip of the brush to um, kind of get these real small details in. Okay, that's literally all the white, but I'm going to paint his pink ears now. So I'm going to add a little bit of red. Oh, by the way, if you're using a different type of gouache, um, Artist Loft is really convenient because it's not sealed. Um, it just screws on real tight like this, but many types of gouache come, you'll see there's like a spike in here, oh, a spike in here in the lid. And then um, you open it and it's really, there's like a plastic seal. It's not even a removable foil seal, it's a plastic seal. And you just turn that lid upside down and push it down. It's got like a built-in needle to help puncture that. So if you bought a different type of gouache and you're confused about that, um, you can use a pin or like a push pin or something or thumbtack, or you can just do uh, like I showed and use the pin on the cap to puncture that open. Okay. so. Red is very, very pigmented. We will only need a itty little bit in order hey, to get this pink. Yes, Stacey. Uh, so we have a question from Kathy. She asked, is there a special type of brush to use for this paint? Uh, these are watercolor brushes. So gouache, I don't really know why. Um, people don't really market things like gouache canvas, gouache paper, gouache brushes it's just the same quality that you would use as a watercolor so you don't really need to dedicated uh, materials for it so watercolor level is perfectly fine you want something that's watercolor because it's designed to pick up and hold and load water um, so you want to be able to get as much paint up into the bristles with water in it as well to be able to transfer it from your palette to your paper okay we are doing the pink of his ears. We're mixing this white. And we're getting just a little bit of red. Always easier to add more 
than it is to take away. So we're just getting a nice little pinky color. No real wrong answer. And if, um, if I were trying to be really accurate, I would spend a lot more time mixing this color, maybe adding some like yellows to get an orangey pinky look to it. If you look at the reference image, it's not just straight pink, but this is more of an illustration. So um, yeah, just going off of whatever color you think looks nice. Okay, I have a couple of questions. Yes. Mm -hmm. So first one, sometimes uh, there's a bunch of liquid that comes out of the tube. Is there anything you can do about that? And then does gu a gouache dry darker than it looks when you first paint it? Um, gouache doesn't really dry darker. No, it dries matte. So it may change the appearance a little bit because the texture looks different. Um, but the color pretty much stays true. And um, as far as the liquid in the tubes, try shaking up your tubes, massaging them a little bit. That's just because the product's been sitting on the shelf a little bit and it's settled. Um, but that's not really a problem. If you squirt it out and there's a lot of liquid, just like push that off to the side and mix it together. Okay. All right. So um, going to the ears, my paint, see, even as I'm talking, and waving my pencil around or my brush around it's kind of drying but we're going into the pink and we are just laying it down if i want to cover these pencil lines i can make it even thicker less water and it will cover it just fine the black paint will definitely cover it and here i added water can the camera pick this up a little bit? A little bit. It's turning paler. That's because it's picking up, or I've watered it down more, so it's becoming more transparent, and you're seeing the white of the paper more. So I'm going to load my brush, load my brush again, and add more paint right there. Ta da! Okay. Getting this pink all loaded in. We have another question. Sure. How do you stop the color from bleeding into another color? Um, if it's bleeding into another color, it's too wet um, and you have not waited long enough in between uh, doing the color side by side. So if you are, if I were to um, paint the black immediately like Right here, I've done the pink. Okay, switch over, done the black. It might bleed into each other, especially if you're using a lot of water. I don't use a whole lot of water. It's pretty thick. So my colors never really bleed. Uh, if you're using it more of like a water color, then yeah, you're gonna get that problem where they're blending into each other. Um, and that's just a time and patience thing. And one strategy is to, if you paint an area, um, leave that alone and then go paint somewhere else on the painting. So the colors are never wet right next to each other. Okay, and you can see here, I'm actually being kind of messy. That's because I know I'm going over with black here in a minute. So it'll cover up any of this extra pink that I'm going outside of the lines with. It doesn't matter. Okay, so that's the pink of his ears. I've got the white down. Um, and now I'm going to do the green of his eyes. Okay, does anyone for 1 million brownie points know the number one rule about washing your brushes? The number one rule of what is the one thing you are supposed to do or not do when washing your brushes? Anyone know? Anyone know? It always drives me bonkers whenever I see someone do this because that's just how you ruin your materials. Don't leave them in the water. Correct. Sophia, ding, 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 is the winner. Never leave your brushes sitting in the water. Clean them off, dry them with a paper towel or a cloth, and then you're good. Don't leave them sitting in the water. These, are, these bristles are glued in to this tube and then held in place with pressure. But if you leave them in the water, they'll 
um, water is soaking up into the bristles and ruining the glue. So your bristles are going to fall out. Um, and if you do, I was going to mention this, if you have a particular size brush and shape that you use a lot and you use it to death, that's a good indicator that maybe you should buy a really high quality version of that size and shape of brush. These are entry level essential brushes. They work great for this style of project, but if you're really um, wanting to become a dedicated painter and you use your materials a lot over time, um, that's a good way to figure out which brushes you should invest in and which that you can just leave as is. Okay. Uh, we have hit the one hour mark. I'm going to keep painting. If you have to go, don't worry about it. Um, this class is being recorded and will be uploaded to Michael's YouTube channel tomorrow. And um, if you have to go, thanks for coming and drawing with us. And we won't be taking too much longer. We don't have that much left. So let's keep going. Next, we have the green of the eyes. So I want to do the uh, pale green and the yellow ochre to create this kind of greeny yellow look here in his um, eyes. And we're just going to squirt out just a little bit of pale green. A little bit of yellow. And you can see, oh, it's off camera, you can't see. I have barely any. It's because it goes a long way. I'm adding water to it and I'm painting a very small area so I do not need to squirt out a whole lot. Uh, I'm going to switch to a slightly smaller brush. I have a, this is a number one. What about number two? Number two, found you. So number one and two, they're really not that much different in size but uh, I can tell the difference. I'm going to do a two. Um, and so we're just doing this green part. And then I know that I'm going back and adding black on top so I can go outside the lines and it's not gonna be an issue. I just grabbed a little bit of green and a little bit of yellow, mix them together, load up my brush and slap it on. Hey Maddie, mm -hmm. I have another question. Are you mixing yellow and green? Yep, I'm using, this is the yellow ochre and the pale green. And I'm actually putting it on the paper and it's a little darker than I want. So I'm just going to go over here and steal some of this white. I'm pulling from the back end so I don't get any of that red. Um, adding a little bit to my brush, adding it here. So it's a little bit lighter, green, yellow. And your baby cat may have a different color eye or a different eye color than mine. Look, okay, he's got these beautiful green eyes. And it looks real bad. It looks real weird right now because I'm going over with the black and I know that. So I can go outside the lines, doesn't matter. Very forgiving. The black will cover all the mistakes. If you're painting a white cat, that's a much bigger challenge. But Gogi is a level one cat drawing. Okay, so it's loaded in. Maybe I'll go in and add a little bit more color after the fact, but for a placeholder now, it's fine. Okay. Now. The next one we're doing is gray. So I'm going to use black and white to get that. Um, this white has been, it's touching a lot of other colors and I don't want to risk mixing it in with um, my uh, gray that I'm making. I don't want it to be like a purpley gray or a kind of bluey green gray. I want it to be just gray. So I'm going to set out a little bit a fresh white over here. So plenty of room. And then the black and black is very, very pigmented. It will really 
um, take over that white. So we're just going to use a little bit of it and then gradually add a little bit more and more black to it to get that final gray. Okay. So brush is wet. Starting with the white, grabbing a little bit of black. See, it's just like, bam, really dark gray. But I actually need, I'm doing kind of a bigger area up here, his nose and his lip right here. So I need quite a lot of volume. I'm going to grab more white, a little bit more black, and I've got gray. Okay. Do, 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 do. And I'm laying it on. And you can see I've got pencil underneath it, gone, erased. Actually not erased, painted over. The paint is very thick, so it's not a problem. It just hides it. I will, if you guys are interested, I can show you. I have some other gouache paintings off to the side of what gouache looks like whenever it's um, treated like watercolor, where you really thin it out and get it to be more transparent. Let me know in the chat if you care about that. I can show those. Um, but for now, we're just gonna make it nice and thick because it's easier. Sharon says, yes, please. <laughs> okay, Sharon. All right, Sharon, that's all I need is one fan and then we will, we will show it off. Okay. <clears throat> then we've done the forehead. And like I said before, we are going to paint black on top so I can reshape that with the final layer of black later on if I think it looks a little wonky. So gray for the top of the nose, the highlighted fur right here. Kim has a question. She said, why would you thin out gouache to make it look like watercolor? Why not just use watercolor? Well, um, it's like having a multi-purpose tool in your kitchen. If you uh, only have a tool that does one thing, it takes up a lot of space and money whenever you have a different tool that could do two different jobs, then why not just have that, right? That's kind of how I feel about it. If you're a really passionate watercolorist and you really um, only want to do watercolor, there is a visual difference in watercolor from gouache if you are really using it like watercolors. Uh, really expensive watercolors can react differently with chemicals and additives that you add to watercolor to create like cool effects like salt or um, different like even baking powder, or baking soda, you can get different chemical reactions and that doesn't always work the same way with gouache. Um, and it, some of the paints themselves just look different. The colors look different um, and there's more there's more of a market for watercolor. So you've got a lot more specific tools made for it that may not always work just for gouache. Um, but I digress. Um, you, if you are just a hobbyist and you don't want to spend a ton of money on a ton of supplies, gouache is good because you can use it for kind of a watercolor look and a gouache look. Okay, so we are on the gray. We have finished the gray. Kind of like how that looks. It's kind of cute. And the last part is black. And um, I'm probably going to use a couple different size brushes throughout this, depending on where I am on the face. Um, you can use a much bigger brush for these larger areas. But once I've already get but once I get down into like the little hairs and things, I'll be switching down to a different size brush. Um, so important things to note here, I don't want to just paint straight from the cheek into the chest. I wanna leave that white line to create the illusion of a separation from the head and the chest. Um, but otherwise, <laughs> you just have to remember that once that black is down, you can't really get rid of it. You can paint over it like I mentioned before. It's not quite the same. It's doable. It's okay. Um, it doesn't look the best. Um, but you know, maybe the best is not 
what we're aiming for. You know, we're just having fun and we're practicing and we're learning. So don't be too hard on yourself if you make a mistake here. So we have the black and I'll show you right now. If I add a lot of water, it's perfectly clear. I add a little bit of black see through and then it's like, boom, watercolors. Looks just like watercolor. I don't want that. I want it to be very, very saturated. So we're really loading it up. Really, really opaque. And I've got a lot of water on my paper now, so it's acting like a watercolor. Let's see if I can blot that up. Kathy has a question. Mm -hmm. After the paint is dry, do you need to apply a finish on top? Oh, no. I have never done that. Uh, finishes are mostly used for oils and sometimes acrylics. Um, I just put it in a frame with a glass panel on top of it and keep it out of the bathroom where it's really humid. Um, it won't really do anything. Uh, the humidity won't destroy it. It'll warp the paper because it's watercolor paper a little bit. But if your paper, as we're painting here, if you feel like your paper is really buckling, uh, not the end of the world, just put it underneath a book with, or put it in a book uh, underneath something heavy for a day or two and it will flatten right out. Not a problem. So this, because I showed you guys that it, how it works as a watercolor here, it's actually thinner than I would like it to be. That's okay. I like it to be really, really opaque black. So here I'm being really careful about the shape I create with this. Okay. So whoops, I really kind of gunked up that that fur right there, trying to cheat it with using this big brush, but we'll make it work. We're just gonna lightly press so we get the angle of the brush using it to our advantage here and then pulling down to create those hair lines. Whoa, going outside the lines. Forget the rules. In the ear, holding my breath as I pull these long lines. Does anyone else hold their breath whenever they're drawing or painting? Because I feel like even just moving, I'm going to, or just breathing, I'm going to mess up a line. Dangerous sometimes, but I remember to breathe. Okay, loading it up. I want it to be really, really opaque. Okay, I'm going to turn it a little bit just because it's easier for my hand to do it. I don't want my, to rest my hand on the wet paint, so I'm turning it upside down. And then pulling here. Not enough oh. paint, not enough water on my paintbrush. Yes, Stacey? Yes, we have a couple questions. So mm -hmm. the first question, Tara asked, can you layer uh, gouache paints? And then Kim asked if if you want it to be okay, opaque, why do you keep adding water? Uh, just so I can um, add like the fluidity to it. Uh, Cause I'm adding water, but I'm also adding paint just to um, make it more volume. The water extends the volume of the paint. It's just like really concentrated pigment. If I were to just use straight out of the tube, it'd be too thick, too chunky. It'd be like acrylic. So it does have to have some water to it, but it's a balance. You, it's a little bit of both to get it to, to move around. I don't want it to be like chunky and streaky by adding it straight out of the tube. I need to have more water in it. Mm 
Okay. I'm just using the tip of my brush here to create these little details in here and get into the lips. And pull it out like that. And you can take your time. I am rushing a little bit here. You can use a smaller brush to get in there in those details. If you really want. Okay. Um, can you buy a white gel pen separately, any particular brand? Um, there are, are a lot of different options. I recommend just going to Michael's and um, trying out the different ones they have uh, on the little sample papers they have on the shelf above it because um, may just be up to your own preference and uh, different pens will work for different situations. Like if you're drawing directly onto the paper versus if you're drawing onto the gouache itself. The nose here. Okay. And then I'm just going to jump right here into the eye. Because I know that I can add the white highlights after the fact. Okay, back adding a little bit of more layers to it. Oh, someone asked, I didn't answer this. Um, can you layer it? Yes, you absolutely can, um, but you wanna work from light to dark like we're doing. So um, I'm not gonna put the pink on top of the black. I'm gonna put the black on top of the pink, on top of the gray. Are there any um, more final questions we have in chat? I'm almost done here with the face. The chest will be the exact same thing. We're just leaving one that question. Here. Yes. Can you blend this paint like watercolor so you get more of a fade from one to the other? Um, yeah, you can a little bit. I, I don't really. Um, do too much of that. I like to mix the whole color on the palette and then paint it on the paper. Um, but I know in theory what you're talking about. And I think it's totally achievable. You just have to play around and see what sort of result you can get. Okay. So I'm going to just finish this eye right here. And then I'm going to show you how the white works on the other eye because it's probably dry by now. We got quite a few questions coming in here. Mm -hmm. um, so we had a question about the white on the cat's eyes, do you use the gouache paint or would you use a gel pen? Mm. I'm just going to use um, the white paint right here. I've loaded it in, my brush is wet. I've added white to the tip of my brush right here, but then I'm just going to daub it on like boop, daub, and then one right here. 
Um, and you would do the same same thing to this eye. It's not dry yet because I was just working on it, um, but in theory, just the exact same step. And as far as um, adding all the little details around the the nose and everything, you can use any sort of white gel pen, like I mentioned um, down here. I have a bunch of different options that I use. These are, I think I got these um, kind of just some like little artsy boutiques. This is a zebra. Uh, I can't actually see underneath this label. It's a zebra Japan 1801. Oh, this one's good. It's a recollection signature special opaque marker. This was kind of got like a felt tip at the end. And I think I actually used this one. Is this dry enough to show you? little dot, dot, dot here. Yeah, it is. So you can add the little um, white freckles and specks and things. Um, and then also, if you're wanting to do the eyebrows or the whiskers, you can use this for that as well, and it will um, draw well on it. I do recommend, like I said, um, waiting 24 hours for your paint to sort of cure before um, drawing with any microns or fine liners because you can kind of, it, it doesn't work well if the paint is not perfectly, perfectly dry. It's dry to the touch already in most areas, but you really want to let it like be bone dry before you add any extra little drawings to it. And um, I'm going to let you guys keep working on finishing out your cats while I grab those watercolory ones that I promised I would show you. Okay. So, show this to the side. So here, this was also used in gouache, and then I went over it with uh, microns um, the next day. Um, but yeah, I, I thinned it out down here, and so I have this fade. And it's just gouache, but you can see it behaves very similarly to watercolor. And here it's transparent, and here her ears, or her hair is a little bit transparent to get that hair texture. And then this one. Um, is also gouache and I've mixed a lot of different colors in here but on top of that I've done the fine liner and I use color pencils to color in the details um, and then even here on the face you can kind of see there's white from gel pens and gel markers of uh, where I wanted to do the little extra highlights um, after putting the color down on top. So uh, what is the cat's name? The cat's name is Gogi. He is over there. Maybe I'll pull him up whenever we say goodbye. Um, but yeah, any final questions wrapping up now? Let's see if I can finish out this ear. Am I an illustrator? No, I'm not an illustrator. I studied art in school and I just do it for fun um, as a hobby. I find it, there's more pleasure in it if I'm not doing it for a profession, um, but thank you. How do you figure out to put the highlights in the second eye? Oh, okay, well, let's just go ahead. So where do you figure it out? Eh, it's just kind of, uh, arbitrary where you're putting it. I like to place it similarly to this eye. So I've got the little dot on the left and then like a line on the right. And that really makes the eyeball come to life. Oh, good. I'm glad you guys enjoyed the class. Um, I see a question from Wendy. What color would you use if you used a calico? Um, well, the I would probably blend a lot of my own colors, but this burnt sienna would probably be great for a lot of the brown colors in the calico's fur. Um, Alrighty, yeah, I don't think we're gonna have time to do the chest, but thank you everyone for coming, and I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful National Pet Day. And uh, give your little furry friend a hug and a squeeze for me.
And um, if you want to um, share your finished piece with me online after the fact, you can find me at uh, Maddie Miso at Instagram. Um, so it's just M-A-D-I-M-I-S-O. And um, you can tag me there and uh, I will see your finished piece. Lots of thank yous. Um, Kim asked real quick about mm -hmm. how many whiskers, if you wanted to do whiskers. Oh, I, um, I like the rule of odd numbers in nature. So I would do three or five or seven um, if you were doing whiskers on top of your cat's face. So um, really just look at your cat and see how many whiskers they have and then maybe uh, go off of how many you can count on their little faces. Okay, thank you so much for coming everyone. I hope you all have a wonderful National Pet Day. Bye, thank you. Thank you everyone.